Hi, I'm Tony Northrup and for the book Stunning Digital Photography, I'd like to give a long-term review of the Canon 5D Mark III camera. The Canon 5D Mark III is one step below Canon's top-of-the-line 1DX camera and it is a fantastic camera at a pretty fantastic price, uh, fantastically high that is. It rings in about $3,400 now retail, but if you look on eBay you can find it for about $2,800. So how does that compare to Canon's other cameras? Uh, not that well, especially when you consider that the 5D Mark II, which you can readily get used, it runs you about $1,100 on eBay. So you could buy about three 5D Mark IIs for the price of one 5D Mark III. Is it three times as good? I'll take a look and we'll find out. I'll start with the image quality. Now, back when I first got this camera in March, I did a review of the image quality comparing the 5D Mark II to the 5D Mark III and people were outraged because my subjective tests turned up no noticeable difference. I did a suite of real world tests covering just about every type of photography you could think of and I could find no area where the image quality was better on the 5D Mark III. I then followed up with a series of controlled lab tests and what I found was that the 5D Mark III had improved image quality at ISO 50,000 and 100,000 and below that, no noticeable improvement in image quality. This was pretty shocking to me because when I upgraded from my Canon 10D to my Canon 5D, there was a massive image quality improvement. And then when I upgraded from my 5D Classic to my 5D Mark II, again, it's like the image quality like doubled. The image quality from the 5D Mark II to 5D Mark III goes up about 3% according to DxO's objective testing. According to my own subjective testing, I couldn't tell the difference. And I was a little scientific about it. I made a series of lab tests comparing pictures from the 5D Mark II to the 5D Mark III and gave them to about two dozen different photographers. And the number who picked the 5D Mark III's pictures in a blind test, zero. In fact, a lot of people picked the 5D Mark II's pictures. I'm not gonna tell you that the 5D Mark II has better image quality, but it doesn't have worse image quality than the 5D Mark III. So if image quality is what you're going for at any sort of reasonable ISO, any ISO that a professional would use, get the 5D Mark II and you'll save yourself a couple of grand, maybe even three grand, and you're better off putting that money into lenses. So the 5D Mark III doesn't shine when it comes to image quality, but it does shine in some other areas. The autofocus system, for example, it is remarkable. It's by far the best autofocus system on any camera short of the big boys from Canon and Nikon, the uh, D1 and the 1DX. Uh, if you're spending less than four grand, this is the best autofocus system you can get. It is spot on. It is fantastic. It covers, it goes right out to the left and right thirds of the frame so you can do your rule of thirds and without having to focus recompose. It tracks moving subjects fantastically and I tested this pretty thoroughly because I spent most of the summer chasing osprey and other birds of prey while they were flying. That's kind of the ultimate test for a camera like this and the 5D Mark III shined. But if something happened while I was chasing those osprey, I tripped in a marsh and my big 500 millimeter lens crushed my poor 5D Mark III, breaking off the front of it completely. And I had it to send it off for repairs. It was gone for a couple of months because it was a new camera and they didn't have the parts. So I got used to shooting with my 5D Mark III and its fantastic autofocus system and then I had to go back to my 5D Mark II and you know what? It got the job done just fine. So it's a funny thing. The autofocus system is what the 5D Mark III does best compared to the 5D Mark II, but it still didn't make that big of a difference because they still got the shot. So you can get by with the 5D Mark II, but you have to use the center auto autofocus point at all times. With the 5D Mark III, you have a lot more liberty. You can go all the way to the left or right thirds of the frame and still get pretty good continuous autofocus. You can still track moving subjects. It works reliably. So you're not locked into that center point composition that you are on the 5D Mark II. It's not that big of a deal with wildlife, honestly, especially flying birds because they're usually so far away that you end up cropping anyway. So that's okay. Um, for wildlife, the other big improvement is higher frames per second. Uh, the Mark III here will get about 6 frames per second, whereas the Mark II, I think it's 3.9 frames per second, a little under 4 frames a second. So you're getting an extra 50% of your pictures in there. Uh, it means you increase your odds of getting that one frame where everything is perfect. And that made a huge difference. I will warn you that uh, this 
camera, the 5D Mark III, will only take about 13 shots before it runs out of buffer if you're using an older CF card. I do spend a couple of hundred dollars on what's called a UDMA 7 CF card, a high performance communication standard that would keep up with my 5D Mark III. With that faster card, I'm now able to get about 33 frames before it starts buffering. And then once it starts buffering, it can still take a couple of frames per second. So if you shoot continuous for long bursts on the 5D Mark III, just take that tip, get a UDMA 7 CF card. While I'm on the subject of CF cards, the 5D Mark III actually has a second memory card slot. 5D Mark II didn't have that, and the lower end Canon cameras don't have that either. It is an SD card, and it's optimized for use with an iFi card. This is actually a feature that I really love with it. I really appreciate it. I can slide an iFi card in there and use it for wireless tethering. So if I'm in a studio shoot, I will tether it back to an iPad or a tablet PC, and I can hand that to the art director and they can watch the pictures on a big screen as I'm taking them and give me feedback like, oh, uh, let's have a happier pose or let's fix the model's hair. And that helps a lot. The second card slot also allows for cheap expandability. So I just keep a really big SD card in there. And that way, if I happen to fill up my main CF card, at least I'm not out of luck. It will automatically start recording to the second slot without me having to swap cards or miss a few frames. So that's been really helpful. Another area where the 5D Mark III really wins is in night photography. Now with every camera I've used except for the 5D Mark III, you're pretty much left squinting at night. You can look through the viewfinder, but you can't see much. And live view is completely useless. You can turn on, but it goes black. With the 5D Mark III, you can turn on live view and see things in fantastic view. It's almost like having a night vision. Live view works great at night, and the contrast-based focusing with live view works really well too. Um, and in fact, all types of focusing in dim environments work well. So I feel like the Mark III is a big winner for any sort of real-world night photography. With that said, when Chelsea and I are going out for night photography, one of us ends up with the Mark II, and it's not that hard. I mean, it's not an extra $2,400 of uh, benefit by using the Mark III. It just means you have to work a little bit harder at the focusing. Uh, maybe you have to take a couple more test shots and refocus to make sure you get it right. Anyway, it's a nice to have, it's not a must have. The 5D Mark III also advertises some better video quality. Uh, notably, it has a couple of features that are good. So it has a headphone jack, which is good for monitoring, and it has uh, focusing while you're recording. Um, the headphone jack is useful, though, with the 5D Mark II, you can install a Magic Lantern and get a special adapter and still connect a headphone jack to the camera in case you have somebody uh, monitoring the audio. So it's kind of a draw there. And the autofocusing while you're recording is contrast-based focusing, and it's really slow and kind of clumsy. So that's not that great. And I don't know, video-wise, I would steer people to the 5D Mark II and just tell them to spend the rest of the money on glass and light. Now, the 5D Mark III does have a lot of kind of minor improvements, just really nice little touches that are so nice to use on a daily basis. I, for one, love the rate button. Uh, as you're reviewing your pictures, you can hit the rate button, say, four times to mark a picture with four stars. Then when I import it into Lightroom, I can see the pictures that I liked in the field. And it makes it quicker when I'm sorting through pictures at my desk. Just saves you a couple of minutes now and then, not a big deal. It also has the electronic level. That's a feature that's in most of the Canon cameras now, including the lower end 7D. Um, but the 5D Mark II doesn't have it. And, you know, again, it's a nice to have. So I accept questions from readers of my book, Stunning Digital Photography. And the number one question I get is, which camera should I buy? And people see me with the 5D Mark III and they think that's the one they should get. So far, I've not recommended the 5D Mark III once, not once. For most people, I recommend getting a used 5D Mark II. I see them on eBay now for about $1,100. That's a great price, and it gives you all that extra cash to spend on nice lenses and tripods and memory cards and Lightroom and Photoshop, and that's the way you're gonna get the better pictures. The 5D Mark III won't make a difference in your pictures for most people. Who do I recommend the 5D Mark III to? would be professional wedding photographers, sports photographers, photojournalists, people who really need that focus to snap in fast and they cannot afford to miss a shot. If it's costing you money to miss a few shots, the 5D Mark III is the way to go. I also recommend it for like rich hobbyists. Like if you just 
have 15 grand to blow on camera equipment and you don't care about the extra couple of grand, you're gonna get cool lenses and stuff anyway. If there's no budget for you, yeah, get the 5D Mark III. It's better than the 5D Mark II. I just don't think it's worth the money for anybody who has any sort of restricted budget. Even if you're spending 10 grand, I'd rather see you get the used Mark II and put the rest of the money in lenses. That's what's gonna make a difference in your pictures now, what if you're a wildlife photographer? You might be thinking about the Mark III because of the awesome autofocus system. And I really do appreciate the autofocus system when I'm shooting moving wildlife. However, I don't recommend it for wildlife photographers. Instead, in the Canon world, I steer them towards the 7D. The 7D provides great autofocus, not as good, but good enough. And it's got that 1.6X crop factor. That takes you 60% closer to all of your wildlife. It gives you more from your telephoto lenses. And in my experience, you just hardly ever get close enough. So I don't mind using a full frame camera with a big telephoto lens. It gives me a little bit wider field of view, but I always end up cropping and I would have better pictures if I used a 7D. I need one camera to do everything. So the 5D Mark III is still a decent choice for me. However, for most wildlife photographers, get the 7D, put the rest of your money into glass. Lastly, I get a lot of questions from people who shoot video with DSLRs, wondering whether they should go for the 5D Mark III or the 5D Mark II. Between those two, get the Mark II, put the rest of your money in lenses and lights. The improvements of video here are small, and for most people, they're not going to be noticeable. Um, but really, at this point, I would steer you away from the DSLR world at all. Video cameras have caught up with DSLR again, and they do all the video stuff well. Now, I use DSLRs for my own videos, but it's pretty simple. It's just a camera on a tripod. I don't do moving focus or uh, tracking or anything like that, that uh, the video cameras do so much better. Uh, I would also steer people towards, say, the Sony Alpha with their translucent mirrors. They do focusing during video much better and they have electronic viewfinders. So no, don't get a DSLR. Don't get a Canon DSLR for video anymore. Uh, take a look at the Sonys. But just get yourself a real video camera and you'll be better off. I hope you enjoyed this review. If you like it, please click subscribe up above so you can see new videos from me and click like down below. And of course, if you like my videos, check out my book, Stunning Digital Photography, which now has more than three hours of videos like this built into it, mostly covering different photographic techniques. The book is only about $10 if you get the ebook version and all that video is included in it for free, along with access to our private Facebook group where we'll give you feedback about your pictures and answer any questions you have. Um, you'll get feedback from both myself and my partner Chelsea, as well as other readers of the book. So please do check it out. Links are below. Thanks.